In this video I'm going to continue testing the uh, Phoenix 612 uh, receiver uh, POC board, the proof of concept board. And in the last couple of videos I uh, was testing this uh, SA612 which is the output of the SA612 from the receiver which is going to be generating an audio signal that will be going to an AF amp amplifier. And uh, there's another 612 at the front here. That's where the uh, preamp will be coming in. RF will be coming in through a preamp, through a bandpass filter, and coming into the first SA612. And that will be uh, mixing the signal up to a 12 MHz IF, which will go through the crystal filter and make it back out, out here to the uh, next uh, SA612, which will have a, a BFO and will create uh, audio uh, coming out. So in this I'm going to simulate a, a 3.75 mi uh, MHz RF signal coming in uh, from, from an antenna. Then I'll have a 15.75 MHz uh, LO coming in and uh, uh, that'll be coming into the oscillator port of the uh, SA612 and I'll be probing the output uh, of the SA612 with my SA. So this is connected to my 50 ohm um, signal generator and this is my 50 ohm signal generator and my 50 ohm uh, uh, spectrum analyzer. So here's the configuration of my signal generator. So on channel 1 I'm generating a 3.75 MHz signal. This is going to be the input uh, to the SA612 which will be coming from the preamp or, and coming from the antenna. It's going to be at minus 10 dBm but I've got two attenuators in line here. I've got a 20 dB attenuator and a 30 dB attenuator. That's 50 dB of attenuation. So that minus 10 dBm signal is going to be actually minus 60 uh, dBm that's going into the front end of the SA612. On channel 2, I'm going to be generating an oscillator signal of 15.75 MHz at minus 10 dBm. So this is going to represent a local oscillator that's going to feed into the oscillator port of the SA612. And that's going to be at minus 10 dBm and there's no attenuation on this port. So here's the configuration of my spectrum analyzer. I've got a 10 dB uh, external attenuator connected to the spectrum analyzer. I am sweeping from uh, 1 megahertz to 16 megahertz. I've got my preamp on and I've got 20 dB of, of attenuation dialed in. And I've got my peak table turned on. And my bandwidth is set to 3 uh, kilohertz. So I'm now going to turn on the signal generator and I'm generating, that's the uh, the LO signal there, the 15.75 MHz uh, LO and that's the RF now being generated. So there you can clearly see three peaks. You can see the 15.75 uh, MHz at uh, minus 69 dBm, the 12 MHz, the mix component, so that's uh, basically the difference between 15 and 3 megahertz that's coming out to around minus uh, 78 uh, dBm and the 3.75 megahertz input RF signal is coming out about minus uh, 88 uh, uh, dBm and keep in mind that signal that 3.75 megahertz signal it's coming out of the SIG gen at minus 10 and it's hitting a 20 dB attenuator so the input to the SA612 is minus 60 uh, dBm. So this is showing the output for a RF signal, the 3.75 MHz signal being generated at minus 20 dBm and with the 50 dBm, a 50 dB attenuator that's coming out to be about minus 70 uh, dBm. So you could see the mixed uh, component here, the 12 megahertz uh, frequency, which is uh, the mix from the LO and the RF in, is coming out about minus 88 uh, dBm, 
and there's the LO that's coming in at roughly around minus 69 dBm. For this next test I've swapped out the LM7805, the 5 volt regulator, and I put a LM7808, a 8 volt uh, regulator in, and I'm going to repeat the tests. Here's what the spectrum analyzer is showing, and I'm going to enable the the SIGGEN, so there I'm seeing my three peaks. I'm seeing the 15.75 MHz uh, LO at uh, minus 68 dBm. The uh, 12 MHz, uh, that's the mixed component, coming out at minus 76, minus 77 dBm, and a 3.76 uh, MHz input RF signal at uh, minus 87 dBm and that's for the 3.7 MHz signal coming in. The SIGGEN is uh, generating minus 10 and I've got 50 dB of attenuation so that's uh, minus 60 dBm that's going into the uh, SA612. So once again I've summarized uh, the data from uh, this test I performed here and so this is for the first SA612 in the receive chain and so here's the two tests first one is with a 5 volt regulator so the uh, SA612 is being powered with approximately 5 volts and then the second test uh, the SA612 is being powered with the 8 volt uh, regulator so I'm generating a RF in of 3.75 megahertz there is a 50 dB attenuator, so I'm generating a minus 10 dBm signal, uh, minus 10 dBm LO signal at 15375. So the SA is seeing the uh, 15375 megahertz signal at minus 69 dBm. The 12 megahertz mixed signal, which is a difference between the two signals, it's at minus 78 uh, dBm and a 3.75. Uh, megahertz RF input uh, into the SA612 is minus 88 dBm. Now I went and I uh, I did a minus 20 dBm uh, RF in so I dropped the 3.75 uh, megahertz signal an additional 10 dB which puts it at minus 70 dBm input into the SA612 and for that uh, I didn't see any um, of the RF coming in and I saw minus uh, 88 dBm for the 12 megahertz uh, mixed signal coming out and for the 15375 uh, LO signal it's minus 69 so it's the same as uh, before and keep in mind these values are well there's a 10 dB external attenuator so these readings are actually 10 dB uh, higher than what they should be or 10 dB lower so you have to add 10 dB to these numbers. And also keep in mind that there's no transformers uh, uh, being used here. My uh, SA um, spectrum analyzer is 50 ohms and the SA612 is 1500 ohms. Um, my SIGGEN has got output impedance of 50 ohms so there's going to be impedance mismatches here. So you can't trust these numbers as an absolute but however the relative numbers are what we're looking at. So once I power it up to uh, I put another 3 volts and the SA612 is being powered up to 8 volts with the minus 10 dBm input signal. Uh, what I'm seeing at the output is I'm seeing minus 77 dBm for the 12 megahertz signal which is pretty much the same as what I was seeing for the um, for the 5 volt uh, powered SA612, uh, minus 87 for the RF in, which is about the same, and minus 68 for the LO, which is about the same. So powering it from 8 volts to 5 volts is making no difference whatsoever in terms of the performance of at least this specific SA612 that I'm using.